This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hello. Today we have an interesting case. She is a 75-year-old elderly lady who has pseudo exfoliation, non-dilating pupil and is posted for cataract surgery. She has a pre-existing astigmatism of 1.5 diopter which is against the rule and she deserved an astigmatic correction. So a toric lens was planned for her but there are a couple of challenges to meet in this patient. Apart from the non-dilating pupil and pseudo exfoliation, the elderly lady has extreme difficulty in hearing. So that was a challenge which was actually more concerning for me. So let's see how we deal with these complexities in this patient. So this was my game plan. The first goal was to ensure that she is comfortable and had very minimal sensation and also some form of akinesia preferably so I decided to give her a subtenance block. This was a rare event for me since I had not done any toric patient with a block because my concern was sometimes we don't get the patient looking at the light. The eye turns out somewhere else and that causes an issue. So let's see how things turn out in this case. The second challenge was obviously much more easier to deal with because I just had to deal with the small pupil appropriately using pupil expansion devices so that the toric lens placement and alignment could be seen well. Before I start the case, let's have a look at the toric lens calculation report and we are expected to place the lens at 6 degrees. So I've given the posterior subtenance block using a 26G needle and around 2ml of lignocaine was injected. The reference marking and the axis marking has all been done. The marks are a little thicker than what I would have actually preferred. So we begin the surgery by making the two side port incision. The capsule is stained. OVD is injected into the eye. And I position the main incision which is centered around the steep axis. It's around 4 degrees. I am injecting OVD under the iris so that it is lifted up. I can introduce two Kuglen hooks and I am stretching the pupil to perform some sort of a stretch pupiloplasty. I am ensuring that there are some micro sphincter tears which ensure adequate pupillary dilatation for me to see well for the confirmation of the final alignment of the toric lenses. So I prefer to use an expansion device like the BHEX in such situations. But now the pupil size is actually quite well dilated so you can manage the case without a device as well. Sometimes these iris becomes floppy uh, after we stretch them. So that's the reason to retain them in place I would like to use the uh, BHEX device. My goal is to perform a 5 mm axis here. The pupil expansion now with the BX device is around 5.5 mm. So I want to keep my rexus diameter uh, lesser than the size of the pupil expansion. Gentle hydrodissection is done, decompression is done. At this moment, I noticed that there could be some amount of zonular weakness as well because as I'm trying to mobilize the nucleus, I can see uh, the bag also slightly coming along with it. So I repeat the hydrodissection and ensure that the nucleus and the cortex are totally free from the bag. And this is confirmed usually by rotating the nucleus. Time to manage the nucleus now. The superficial epinucleus is aspirated first. Going into the chop mode and the vertical chop is being done. The nucleus is quite soft and very easy to deal with. It's not an issue. I would say this is the ideal grade to get because the nucleus division becomes extremely easy. It's not too soft, not too hard. Oh. 
So now we're moving to the quadrant aspiration mode, wherein I'll be using predominantly the torsional energy. Without much difficulty, all the small fragments are taken care of. Time to remove the epinucleus. The distal part of the epinucleus is first trimmed and along with it the last fragment of the nucleus also comes along. So all in all the nucleus management was very quick and easy. The cortex is aspirated using a bimanual irrigation aspiration device and The posterior capsule is flushed with PSS as is customary to ensure that the posterior capsule is as clean as we can get. I'm injecting some intracameral antibiotic cefuroxime followed by injection OVD. In this case, I've decided to use a capsule tension ring just because the patient had pseudo exfoliation and also I believed that it ensured better centration of the lens in this bag with pseudo exfoliation. Intraocular lens is implanted into the bag. So before removing the OVD, I'm just mobilizing the intraocular lens about 30 degrees away from the intended axis. And now I'm going to remove the BHEX device while the viscoelastic is still there inside the eye. The device is disengaged from the pupillary margin and then pulled out. The viscoelastic aspirated out in front and below the intraocular lens. It's important to ensure that the bag is totally devoid of any viscoelastic so that the lens has a great opportunity to adhere itself to the posterior capsule. So now is the time to align the lens properly. I'm just trying to ensure that with the irrigation on in my left hand, I ensure that the marks are very well correlating with the intended axis. And that's it. The case is done. The side ports are hydrated. So you have, we see these small sphincter tears and they're not going to be a major issue. And this is how the first day picture looks. Patient had an uncorrected visual acuity of 6-6 six, six parts. And this was the refraction. So that was it. Thank you so much for watching and hope you found this helpful.